Okay. Let's be back and we continue with the singleton pattern. So, example usage of the singleton pattern, right? So, this is a class which is trying to access the singleton object, right? The in single instance. So, it's handled to the required object. So, it's in service factory dot instance, right? So, this would return it the instance and then it is invoking the the method on that particular instance, right? This was the example of the uh, usage of the singleton pattern. Okay, thing. How are the singleton classes represented in UL notations? Right. So we did not cover uh, this particular aspect while we did the UML notations. Right. Singleton classes. They have a separate kind of a representation when drawn in a use case diagram, uh, in a class diagram, right? So this is the notation that is used to represent a singleton class. Uh, number one is written on the right side of the class box. And this represents that this particular class is a singleton. Similarly, this one needs to be written even in case of drawing a sequence diagram or a collaboration diagram. So, where a class is a single turn, it is mandatory that we write uh, all one on the right hand side of the class box, top right hand side of the class box, to indicate that this particular class is implemented using a singleton pattern, right? Additionally, the attribute, which is the instance, which is a singleton static attribute, is unlined to indicate that it is a static class level member, right? Additionally, the singleton static method get instance which is responsible for uh, running the static instance of the singleton class is also underlined, right? So the three additional notations are uh, added in order to represent a singleton class. Right? So you need to place a number one and then underline the static singleton attribute and the static singleton method. Okay. The session can we uh, write the word singleton using the special symbol limits? I have not come across that notation, nor does your book discuss about this notation. So it's better that we follow the textbook and we will go with the notation as specified here. Right? Let's move ahead to that, that with the finish off with the two important patterns, the factory and the singleton patterns, which are uh, categorized into the creational patterns. And out of the, enti uh, the entire spectrum of the creational pattern, these are the only two creational patterns that are a part of the course, right? Now, next exercise that we will have a look at it, which is actually very important, is that how do we implement the cake store example the cake factory using a singleton pattern for the cake factory. Right? So I'll just quickly take you through the implementation. Cake factory implemented using a singleton, right? And it's quite simple. So we've seen uh, how a factory is implemented. Right? The first thing that this cake factory class to be fitted into a singleton, the first thing it should do is that make the constructor private. First thing to do is make the constructor private so that nobody can instantiate an object of this particular class. Right? Next, I've gone here for eager initialization. So just to make understanding simpler, I've created a private static instance of the cake factory, right? Static instance. The third thing is that, 
method get instance is created which returns an instance of the cake factory the instance of the cake factory which is created inside the cake factory class right rest of the uh, implementation of the cake factory class remains the same the create cake in factory method which returns the required object Direct based on the string type. No need synchronization here because we are not going for lazy initialization. It is the eager initialization that we are doing. Actually, creating instance of the cake factory initially itself store that with us even if that instance method is not invoked. Even, right? The modified cake factory the cake factory is implemented using the singleton pattern okay let's see how this cake factory is used by the cake store so what cake store does is that an instance of the cake factory and then a the cake store okay in the cake store in constructor when the cake store is initialized i get a instance of the cake factory right cake store is initialized and you get a instance of the cake factory so as soon as the cake store is initialized it has an instance of the cake factory with itself which it can use further right so in the next where uh, in the order cake method instead of saying uh, Uh, instead of invoking the instance of the cake factory i am using the instance which the cake of the cake factory the instance of the cake factory i am in using that instance to invoke the method create cake in factory method this would return me an object of the type of the fact of the type of the cake depending upon the type as given by the a uh, customer and then you can further invoke it how a factory pattern is implemented using a single time any questions if there are store is also single time like to make the cake store also single turn it's so if the cake store is uh, a single turn then it's it's still fine right so you you make the cake store as also single turn but inside it's uh, it's also it invokes another single turn factory right which pattern is best this answer to this if you problem which can be solved by only pattern p1 then we use that pattern right problem of the cake store and the cake factory has to be solved or can be solved only using a factory pattern and the singleton pattern right but you find that there are n number of patterns that can be used to solve a problem go for the grasp principles Now we will see grasp principles in coming lectures. But what grasp principle says that assign responsibility to that class which has the information to do required task. Grasp right? principle says that assign responsibility to a particular class to do task if that particular class has the information to do. Carried responsibility. If you follow this particular grasp principles, principle, uh, your OO design would be the best, right? There is a tie between the patterns, good patterns that help you achieve higher cohesion and low coupling, right? Higher cohesion can be achieved if you assign responsibility to a class to do a particular task only if that class has. Information to do that class, do that particular task. 
right if the class doesn't have the information to do that task then obviously it would need inform another class that that means invoke methods of other class that means higher uh, interaction with the other class and that means higher coupling right the idea is go for higher cohesion and low coupling more questions i will not take all of them right now it will be a good idea if you go through the lecture slides once and you would be able to effectively answer the questions yourself right the whole idea is that, that since we need a factory uh, need a class to move the complex creational logic into another class we created another class and and we named it as a factory so so that it is a standard and the other classes in my life also know that this is the place i can get the instances from then the factory class or related classes which are responsible for uh, either recording or providing combined resources are implemented using singleton pattern right so cover two patterns uh, the three pattern and the singleton pattern right let us quickly move to the next pattern ever in the slides i have right now four or five class slides which discuss about uh, the concept of codes to an interface right you can go through these slides i will jump through the slides and not take them right now uh, but i would rather move to the adapter pattern these slides which discuss about code to an interface concept they are quite literally with lot of uh, implementation which are presented in four or five slides and then you and they give an quick good overview as to understand why it is always good to uh, code to an interface in an object oriented design right okay set of patterns that we will look at is the structural design pattern so let's see a structural design pattern we help us to quite uh, to design a structure uh, dealing with the relationships between the various classes right so how the interaction how the relationship between the various classes should be designed so as to maintain various object oriented concept uh, in the given design in order to incorporate various object oriented concepts in the given design right uh, some of the structural patterns uh, out of the 23 um, given patterns they form the part of the structural patterns and today we are going to take a look at the adapter pattern right so let's quickly move to the adapter pattern first understand what is the problem that the adapter pattern is to resolve okay problem at hand is to resolve incompatible interfaces or create a stable interface to similar conflicts with different interfaces right problem is resolution of incompatible interfaces right and soon see uh, this adapter pattern uh, an understanding of the adapter pattern using a diagram right let's see what the solution is convert the original interface of a component into the interface through an intermediate object called as adapter right before i take you to a software uh, implementation let me just give you an example of an adapter in real life right in real life we find a large number of adapters that we use right one uh, common example of an adapter which is outside the software domain is the use of a two pin converter 
right in india we have the uh, circuit say for example my laptop uh, point right it is a three pin socket right it has three pins whereas if you go abroad you find two pin socket that are there right so these three pin a uh, shoe which we call them will do not uh, cannot be plugged into the two pin sockets that are there right more or three pin uh, shoes right they are of the circles right where the two pin uh, uh, the two pin uh, sockets that are available there are straight pins right so the problem here that we have is that there are two different interfaces right an interface is the one that you we are laptop charger port which is a shoe of three pin but on the other side it's a two pin system right what you need here is a two pin converter right so there is a small device right? let me call it a device will actually an adapter which is adapting this interface to the other right is very kind of a concept of an adapter there are two different interfaces right? and we need to merge to these two interfaces right so this is what adapters look like this is my existing system in app by the key. right so which is available with the client but this is my third party system right which is available at present what i need is something in between here which can help me join these two interfaces right because there is a interface which mix match problem i need an adapter right well what we can see that there is something some that you can put in to join these two interfaces so that they form complete whole in terms of software we need some kind of a software implementation class so that the two interfaces become compatible right the clients can continue to use the existing system but so the third party library gets added right this is the adapter pattern then uh, so the idea is there are two different inses which are supposed to be joined together without stirring the existing system and of course you cannot actually disturb the third Party, right so you need to find in a bridge in bridge kind of a implementation which is called an adapter which helps you to join these two incompatible interfaces right i just go back to the problem right so that we are, so that now we have a better understanding of the problem we read the problem statement again so that the process says that how to resolve incompatible interfaces right so for incompatible interfaces are provide stable interface to similar components with different interfaces right so we need to resolve this problem of two incompatible interfaces right the solution is convert the original interface of a component into another interface through an intermediate adapter object right and we diagrammatically again that if this, these are the two incompatible interfaces we need an adapter here between them in order to join the two incompatible interfaces that the two different softwares can interact with each other right and now we take a look next to the of an implementation uh, to the implementation of an adapter that right? understand this adapter in a better using the implementation okay 
okay this one uh, let us take up this example that company abc has a image editing software that open and edit images of jpeg format right this is my existing system and it has an interface wherein the company abc has an image editing software that can open edited images in jpeg format this in this is already in in use by the existing client right so i will skip just the text of it and i'll take you to the implementation of this image editing software this is the existing one right so this is my existing system with an interface the interface called image editor there has a method open image which takes an image It's a class called jpeg editor which implements this interface and provides implementation for the open image method right so this particular system which is already existing has this interface which is open image it is with the clients as well right and this particular system is used for opening and editing images of the jpeg format right back to the problem that we have in hand so now what next suppose if the client wants that they should be able to open or edit images of tiff and pg format as well right so now that they should be able to work with tiff and png images as well they got party library which is the required facility right so my company abc has a which wants additional functionality to open edit tiff and png images as well they finds that there is a third li party library which provides the required facility for opening tiff and png images ability of the company abc to add this newly required third library third party library in my current system right in the existing interface as well right there are clients which are there are other clients also are using the existing interface right but for this particular client i want that should be even able to work with tiff and png images as well in case i need an adapter which actually join the existing interface with the third library with tampering the existing interface because my existing interface is something that is with the client right okay i will first show you the into the third party library right we seen the existing interface so this is the existing interface the interface editor and this is the class jpeg editor the implementation of this existing interface as well implementation of the existing interface right publish image editor as we saw in the previous diagram the method open image which takes a image object then my jpeg editor implements the image editor and implementation for open image so implementation is just dummy for example so it's written a uh, system out println working with jpeg images right this existing interface the third party library has a different interface i right? suppose my third party library is which is advanced image editor and there are two methods in one if there is open png it also takes an image object then there there are two classes tiff editor and png editor classes implement open tiff and open png right Third, right let's implementation of all these classes so this is 
int editor this is an open ng two methods Metif editor which implements the advanced image editor provide presentation for open wherein it says system telling working with tiff images and does not provide does nothing in open png right then my p editor implements advanced image editor implementation for open png working with p images and does nothing in the open tiff now the problem is creating an adapter so that this third party interface interface to be joined together with the interface of the JPEG images without tampering the existing implementation. Right? It is there with the client. They can invoke the existing methods, right? And still open JPEG if and PNG images and the others who do not want if and PNG, they are not Hampered. Right. So let us take a look at the implementation of the adapter. Right. Create this adapter. My adapter class implement the image adapter interface. Sorry, the image editor interface. Right. So there are two interfaces now. One image editor interface, which was the original one, the one, and an advanced image editor interface which is the one with the third party right so my image adapter class let me just shoot a bit this is okay this my image adapter the editor interface right and it it's an reference to the advanced image editor this is the interface available in the with the third party. Okay. The image adapter constructor. Okay, in the adapter, it is an object and retrieve type of the object. The image dot get type is a method to get the type of the object. Instead of type tiff, I insert a tiff object. Assign it to the, the image editor to advance image editor reference. Okay, if image type is of PNG, then I create an object of PNG editor and assign it to the reference of advanced image editor. Right? This is in the of the image adapter. Okay. Now again. Since my image adapter is editor with existing system. And if remember in my existing system, there was a method open image. No open TIFF or no open PNG. It had method open image. Particular image adapter class needs to provide implementation for open image method. Open image method. The type image, right? If it is, if it involves the it use image editor uh, reference to the advanced image editor in this and invokes the open diff method. If it is PNG, it's an implement uh, invocation to the open PNG. Let me go ahead. The move as I move ahead, right? I that my adapter, right? Now in the image editor, that was what was the existing implementation. I modify, I create an object of the image adapter, and then open image method. The type of the image. If it is JPEG, then I am providing implementation which is there for the JPEG. I 
object of the image adapter and king image adapter dot open image. Okay, I'll again let's go ahead. who all only has the JPEG editor, right? The thing which has the existing JPEG editor, secret of JPEG editor, open image by passing a JPEG image, invokes an image by passing a TIFF image, invokes open image by passing a PNG image, right? Interface to the kind is not changed. Changed. Client wants to use the the client will be able to use the same interface as he was pay, uh, previously using the image interface, right? Passing passing JPEG TIFF as well as PNG images. But the clients who don't want to use TIFF or PNG, their action will not be changed. They will continue to use the same interface. Okay. Adapter class, which is created. I'll go back. Let's do a one se session. Adapter, which is created, which implements the existing interface and creates an uh, object a reference to the new interface. Right? And it, in, in its constructor, it creates the third party based on the type. Right? Provide implementation of, of the implements again based on the type. Right? The G editor is to create an image editor object. It's a JPEG image. Do was doing earlier. Other, other. Create the object and invoke image on that adapter object. I'm not you've uh, understood what I was trying to explain, but I hope it would be better. in the questions. You can please ask me. Uh, sorry. I go back to the age adapter. Let me zoom a little. Okay. I'll just take a question. So, JPEG editor, knowing about other types of images, is reducing uh, cohesion, right? So, I agree to that. It is reducing the cohesion of the JPEG editor class, right? Uh, since it is by name itself, it is only supposed to provide support for JPEG classes, right? However, it is still providing support for TIFF and PNG. Right? So, it's reducing the cohesion. But in this case, the problem we need to solve is join uh, the two incompatible interfaces, and hence the cohesion is being overlooked in order to provide this particular uh, this per in order to solve this problem because we do not want to change the interface that is there with the client. Mm, there's a question, can't the client use the factory? I'm not uh, very sure of the question, the kind of uh, aspect you want to add to this. The source code, right, is only having the APIs. And the client has the API as uh, at, uh, an open image in the you just need to pass the image to it and it does whatever it is supposed to do. Right? So, uh, that's the the client. So, there is there is no factory that the client can use. I mean, it's it's it's, a, it's on the, the company ABC which is supposed to factory or whatever that is required. Right? Then in that case, the face that is there with the client will be Right. And this will affect their already existing applications which are using that particular interface, which is open image. Right? 
I hope I your question. Okay. Any more questions? If there are any other questions, maybe regarding the assignments also, we can take up. You would, would find a lot of uh, uh, material on the internet which does explain the uh, adapter patterns and in fact the other patterns uh, in abstract sense at the design level, right? But uh, while uh, studying this, these particular concepts, I myself felt that uh, unless and until you see an implementation of each of the patterns and understand the implementation, you will be able to appreciate those concepts because implementation is what we are more used to. In fact, if I leave the discussion of the adapter at a design level, it doesn't actually uh, give such a, um, I mean, help so much because it leaves it at, at an abstract level. Right? This is the reason why I have picked up the implementation examples as well to explain the adapter, uh, to explain the patterns. And in fact, I will try and do this for all the things that we cover in this course, right? That does not mean that you get uh, uh, scared that you would be required to read too much code in the examination, right? We also know that there is a varied um, uh, diversity of students that are there and that, that are enrolled in the course. Uh, there would be a chunk who would be uh, familiar with Java as a programming language as such, right? So we would, really, I would really discourage uh, asking language specific question as far as possible, right? But here, effectively in the in the lecture to explain the concept effectively yes I am using Java as the programming language but 99.9 percent .9 you would not be asked to write code in the examination you would be given a case study and asked to find out uh, which patterns you think would be applicable or if this pattern is applicable or if I would say that uh, this is the problem in this case study and I think that this is the pattern which is most uh, suited to explain uh, or reasons to it, right? These kind of questions would be there. They would not be, uh, again, I'm saying 99.9% questions. They would not be such questions. It would be language specific, right? So uh, you don't worry so much, right? right? Okay. Your textbook two is totally based on the design patterns and of course in open exam you are allowed to use both the textbooks or in fact any number of books that you would like and asking me whether t2 required there are people who come with only two books there are people who come with a big of books so it's up to you it's up to the preparation that you have done, how many books you need. <coughs> okay, just one question. Where is one? So, of questions that you would get from the uh, design patterns. Simon, there are a few questions. Uh, some people, I don't know why there is uh, some uh, problem with the uh, diagrams that have have to be drawn in the assignment. The diagrams that are mentioned in the assignment at present are a part of the phase one submission. Phase two is still to come, right? And 
uh, you can uh, submit the assignment as PPTs or you can submit it as a Word file or a PDF. It's all up to you. You can draw uh, one time per page in way, draw it away as long as the layout is clear, it is readable, right? right? <coughs> If you want to star UML, that's the best thing to do. You star UML to draw the diagrams. But if then diagrams which are not supported by star UML, then in that case you have to draw those diagram using MS Office, right? MS Word. So uh, do it that, that way. Uh, questions about Quiz Two? I will upload the details of the Quiz Two. We've just have you finished with evaluation of the answer sheets of the mid-semester makeup examination? So I would uh, take a week time to complete that and then uh, upload details about the quiz too. By the time the assignment submission phase one would also be complete and then I would take up the assignment phase two details as well. Right, so keep looking on the assignments. Uh, announcements on the e-learn portal, you will get information about the quiz too. Quiz subjects are already out. Uh, it will take a week's time to go for quiz two. Uh, question again, uh, last date of submission is 24th or 22nd. We are seeing two dates on the portal. I think you've been late. I've tried to clarify this initially. Uh, officially in the assignment, I had put the date for 22nd, but while creating the folders, I configured them so that you can submit till 24th. This was just to avoid uh, last minute delays due to um, non functionality of the e-learn portal or maybe uh, internet issues, right? So in case you are done with your assignment, please upload it by 22nd. It will still open till uh, during 23rd and 24th as well. You can group, yes. This is what I've already been telling everybody. Um, in case you're not able to find your group mem members, you can join other group or do the assignment on your own. Uh, most of the rest of the questions is what I've answered. Description mandatory, yes, it is mandatory. Otherwise, uh, it would we would not be able to understand the scope of your case study, right? It is mandatory that you submit all the documents as mentioned in the assignment document, right? Uh, with this, I will close today. I will upload these uh, assign these uh, today's lecture slides on the portal, and uh, you have the video of the today's lecture also uploaded in a day's time. Right, thank you so much. Uh, there's no question PPT for lecture eight, eight are not uploaded. Today lecture is lecture eight. Right. So they will get uploaded in a week's time, uh, in a day's time, right? Okay, thank you.